Welcome to On The Level, broadcasting from the Blue Ocean Network studios here in Beijing. My name is Fergus Thompson. Now, there can be few people who would say that China has not made vast improvements in the lifestyles of most of its citizens over recent decades. But this is still uh, a developing country, a relatively poor country, in, certainly in per capita terms. And this can mean that uh, those groups here who are in need of help or, or support from society can still face difficulties. A recent article in the online magazine uh, Aeon by the British journalist James Palmer looked at one of these groups and it asked the question, what is it like to be disabled in China in the 21st century? Well, I'm joined in studio today by two guests who have a lot of experience working with uh, the disabled community uh, here in China. Alessandra Aresu is the country director for Handicap International and Tsai Tsong is the chief editor of Yoren magazine, which is published by the uh, Beijing-based NGO OnePlus One. Uh, thank you both for coming in to On The Level. Thank you for the yeah, invitation. Thank you. Now, I'd, I'd like to start, start off first perhaps by asking you about your respective organisations. Um, uh, Alessandra, Handicap International, by its name, an international organisation, but you're here in China. What do you do? What's your brief in China? Uh, Handicap International has been here since 1998, and China is one of the 60 countries where we work. Mm -hmm. And um, we started at the beginning to respond to emergency in the country, and now we have uh, an average of 12 uh, projects all around the country, mainly in Western China. And uh, what we do is we work alongside people with disabilities to support, uh, support them in uh, um, protect their rights, support their rights, and also improving their living conditions, and also to advocate for what are their bas basic rights. Uh, we work in a comprehensive approach, uh, talking about uh, education, livelihoods, uh, rehabilitation, uh, advocacy, and support to people with disabilities organizations and civil societies uh, who are working in China and uh, are engaging daily in uh, with people with disabilities or on disability to uh, giving them um, technical support or to improve and increase their capacity to make sure that they can advocate in the end for their own rights right. without the need of uh, an international organization right. in the right. long term. Uh, tai Tong, your, inter your organization is not international, it's based here in Beijing, it's a yes. Chinese organization, yeah. one plus one. Uh, it's a little bit special, tell me a little bit about this organization, what's unique about it? Hmm. Our one plus one has been founded in 2006, yeah, and uh, maybe nine 19% of the members uh, in one plus one are persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we call ourselves DPO. Uh, that means a disabled persons, con a disabled persons organization. Right. That's very different from other organizations in China. Maybe for the. Uh, for the area of uh, dis disability, mm -hmm. because sometimes we see uh, many organizations are founded with non-disabled persons, and they also want to help the persons with disability. But uh, we one plus one wanted to advocacy for ourselves, I and see. we want to support uh, support for many other disabled persons. We want more and more dis uh, persons with disability disability can come out and uh, to advocacy for themselves. This is a, a local a domestic organization, mm -hmm. uh, Alessandra Handicap International. Why does China need organizations from outside the country to come in here? Uh, well, uh, one of the main reasons I just mentioned is that still we find in the country that there is a lot of good organizations who are um, who have great potential mm -hmm. to uh, advocate for themselves, but sometimes they lack in capacity. Uh, so we are supporting them, giving them technical support. But one of the other reasons, and One Plus One, for example, is one of our main partners, yeah. and right. that's how we work together. Right. Uh, we have been working together for quite a long time now, uh, but also. Uh, we have other uh, important components of our work that we think are still very important here. For example, uh, in China there is still a, a prominent approach that is a charity approach and a medical approach to disability, mm -hmm. uh, while we promote a social approach. And this is one important uh, role that we are playing here. So are you you're sort of transferring skills or, or knowledge that have been gained in other parts of the world 
to these community to these organizations here in China we are sharing the experience and the approach that has been used uh, around the world by handicap international and other organizations also in China and yes for, for us sharing the lessons learned uh, outside mm -hmm. China and uh, to um, adjust them to the cultural context is certainly what we are doing and also you know for example here there is so much work that has been done by so many organizations mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time we have the impression that the, so much has been not um, tailored on the person with disability each person may have a different need and therefore the, the service should be designed ideally uh, according to the person's needs and this is still a message that needs to be promoted in right. China um, Taiton, moving a little bit more to, to a, a personal level, uh, as somebody with, with a disability here in China, uh, how would you sort of classify the general public attitude to people with disabilities? Uh, positive, negative, neutral? Uh, maybe sometimes in China, the persons think uh, maybe it's a negative, I think. Right. Some, they think uh, the pers uh, persons with disability are useless. Um, are crippled and uh, they they couldn't do do anything for themselves and uh, the maybe uh, they don't have value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is this something that you feel is changing in any way? Uh, this is obviously something that you want to change. But do you feel has there been a change over the last five years, ten years that you have noticed? I think maybe after um, two thousand and eight, uh, the attitude has been changed. Has been changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, they are changing now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there is still a long way to go. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. There are roughly 80 to 85 million people classified as, yeah. as people with disabilities in China. That's one in 20 of the population. Yeah. Now, uh, when I walk in the streets in, in a city like Beijing, I, I, I don't see people with disabilities. I, I would say I'd say more foreigners, and certainly yeah. there are not one in 20 foreigners. Why are uh, people with disabilities, it seems to me, relatively invisible in China? Where are they? Uh, Taitong? Okay. Um, uh, many, many, many foreign, foreign friends often ask, ask me this question. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, maybe it has two answers. When you, when you ask the non-disabled um, people, they will tell you maybe the accessibility is not so good. So maybe the, the persons with disability are, um, are staying in their homes. But when we ask the persons with disability, they say, uh, they will ask us, uh, what should I do when I go out? So um, maybe we think the attitude is the maybe is the biggest barrier for the dis uh, persons with a disability. Alessandra, do you have a, a, a take on this? It is it is a fact, isn't it? It is a fact. Um, on the other hand, <clears throat> on one hand, is certainly the self confidence of people with disabilities is a big issue, and it yeah. needs to be. Um, promoted and this is one of the uh, aspect of our work here so I agree with Taitong that sometimes is the attitude of person with disabilities who are feeling like if I'm outside then I feel uh, uncomfortable because yeah. I'm not um, it, the city is not accessible right. for me on the other hand it's also true that, uh, uh, for example, in the area where I live, I live in Hutongs, I meet people with disabilities these every day. These are these day. very small, narrow laneways in the centre of Beijing, very picturesque, but not that easy to, exactly. to get Exactly. They are very narrow alleys, very narrow uh, streets, where, without cars and without stairs. So in that area, a lot of old people live there. And uh, I have to say that there, there are so many uh, old people in wheelchairs that mm -hmm. go out for strolls and every day I see them and I meet them. So on one hand, it's more comfortable for them to move around that mm -hmm. area. But it's true that we don't see people on the bus. Uh, is, we see many people now take, trying to take the tube. Sometimes it takes a long time. But um, some, some, of, some of them give up, some others stay and uh, wait mm -hmm. for their right to, to take the tube. But it's not easy, yeah. Well, yeah. well you, you've both mentioned accessibility yeah. for, for people with disabilities to come, out, to come outside. Um, 
Tsai Tsong, in your particular case, do the facilities of yeah. the in the city uh, for people with the disabilities, okay. uh, are there enough of them? Uh, I think it's not enough now. Uh, you see, uh, up maybe after the 2008, uh, all the new buildings in in Beijing uh, have maybe ramp rampways for the wheelchair, but sometimes we see the uh, maybe uh, they are not uh, repaired, in, uh, repaired in time. Mm -hmm. And maybe in the subways, uh, we say uh, maybe every station has an um, elevator, right. but uh, they are often locked. If we want to... Uh, That's you, not much good for you. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> if we want to go, if we, if a wheelchair user want to use it, they should uh, uh, maybe uh, take telephone call to the uh, workers uh, in the subways, and uh, sometimes they think you are a troublemaker, so... Uh, <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's in some ways these facilities are there, but it, it, they're not always accessible, they're not always that useful, although they have been put in. If we want to use them, we should uh, maybe we should spend uh, more time than the non-disabled persons. Um, you, you mentioned the the, the, this, the spirit or, or the uh, the attitude of, of of some people with disabilities themselves. Is this for both of you? Is this a problem uh, uh, that that the inside there is a lack of expectation or or a lack of ambition uh, because of the way people have been brought up? Is this something that you find with the people you're working with, uh, Alessandra? Uh, well, yes, um, especially considering that we work um, especially in rural and remote areas and in mm -hmm. poor areas where the knowledge and understanding of disability is still lower compared, and the awareness huh, is still lower compared to big cities like Beijing. Uh, so often we find families uh, that uh, family members that believe that their family members with disabilities um, do not have capacity and skills to be able to study and do well in their lives mm -hmm. and get a job and uh, have a family. So, in fact, the, the idea that people with disabilities can do less is still widespread uh, in, uh, in many areas in China. Uh, and this is why uh, the work that we do with One Plus One uh, is to increase and raise awareness about not only the rights of people with disabilities, but the capacity, their skills and their potential in each, at each level, education, social inclusion, uh, livelihood, working environment. Uh, and I have to say uh, some of the important key points that uh, um, we are addressing are the rights that are included in the UN Convention for Persons with Disabilities, for the rights of persons with disabilities that has been signed by China uh, in 2008. And uh, Tai Tsong was mentioning 2008 mm -hmm. twice before. Uh, it is, is an important year not only yes. because of the Olympic Games but also because of this convention. So China has ratified the convention mm -hmm. and in slowly with our work we are increasing the awareness of people in general that we need to stick to the convention, we need to impl uh, up see the convention applied through the laws and uh, it is very important. The, the laws in China, I, if you read the laws, they are quite progressive. They talk about the rights of people with disabilities to equality in various areas including education, work uh, and access and so on. Um, is there a, a, a large gap, as there sometimes is in China, between what the law says and what actually happens? Tai Tong, do you yeah. notice a difference between what the law says and, and, mm. and what you see in your daily life? Um, yeah, uh, I can mention that. Uh, in 2008, our China re uh, revised the, the protection law for mm. the persons with a disability. And uh, uh, it, maybe it mentioned that when a blind person, if he wants to take part in the exa uh, examinations, uh, want to take part in the exam just like a uh, there are This maybe is the exam to access university, to go into university. Yeah, yes, yeah, the access to the university. So um, if a person want to, a blind person want to take part in um, uh, the the law has mentioned that the government or the um, the yeah the government should uh, uh, supply a um, accessibility or. A uh, reason, uh, reasonable accommodation. Right. Yeah, uh, but uh, mm, when, but when we, uh, when we go to talk talk with the uh, Department uh, of Education, yes, uh, we uh, maybe we apply to uh, take part in the Gaokao. They will refuse us because they say they have, they, they will see the technique 
is not so advantage. Or they will say, we haven't do this before, so we couldn't do this now. So with whatever excuse, these people were not able to sit an exam, which according to the law, yeah. they should be able to sit. But, uh, the, but uh, this year, the situation maybe has been changed because more and more blind persons came out and they say to the media, to mm -hmm. the public, that we have rights to take part in the, the exam. We have rights to uh, be involved in the, uh, maybe in the social, social life. There was, a, there was a protest last year, uh, I think outside the education ministry, simply saying, look, this is our right, please give us our right. And it seems yeah. that there has been some uh, uh, improvement because this year, uh, in June this year, there will be a number of pe uh, yeah. blind people will be doing Gaokao. They are being given the facilities. Um, do you think this will continue and more and more people in the future will be allowed to do it? Yeah, I, I interview a few blind students. Mm, they think it's a good policy and uh, they, th they also think maybe in the future more and more blind persons can take part in, can be contained in Gaoka. But they, uh, there are many other cross, uh, problems for them because the system, the education system is now in China for the blind persons are special education. So they are depart from the normal education mm -hmm. system. <coughs> Uh, maybe they think, uh, although they can take part in the Gaoka, but maybe it's very difficult for them to compete with other students. To pass the exam? Yes. Right. Uh, th this, l let's talk a little bit about education. You mentioned that there is a special education uh, for blind students and, yeah. and that the, the, the access is, is different. Um, what are the problems with integration? Uh, there's a lot of money spent on this parallel systems for mm -hmm. people with disabilities. Uh, Alessandra, do you do any work in, in this area, uh, in the area of education? And is there a move towards integrating, perhaps spending more of that money on integrating people with disabilities into the regular system? Uh, yes, and uh, our main approach is inclusive education. So we are not promoting special schools, mm -hmm. we are not supporting special schools in China, we are supporting and promoting mainstream schools to include more and more children with disabilities in the schools. Um, so what we usually do, we support the schools to become accessible, creating ramps or creating all the uh, equipment that is needed for people with visual impairments, with ear impairments or in wheelchairs. And also we provide uh, capacity building and technical support to uh, the teachers mm -hmm. uh, because the concept of inclusive education does exist in China but is quite recent mm -hmm. and sometimes as we have said is in theory understood and in practice not always applied. So traditionally China had a special school approach to disability. Mm -hmm. What we are trying to do is to um, make sure that those children who have no severe disabilities and can access mainstream schools do have the right mm -hmm. for, to do that. Uh, Tsai Tong, yeah. you, uh, you obviously went, went through a school system. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your experience? Because you, you now work in the media, you interview people. Yeah. How was your experience of education? Um, when I was 10 years old, I, my eyes get, went bad. And at that time, I studied uh, in regular school because I, I didn't know. I didn't know in China there are, there are many special schools because we uh, because you, you uh, just like you just mentioned that uh, maybe on the streets persons uh, pers uh, people uh, are um, people couldn't see many dis persons with disabilities. Yes. Yeah. So at that time, my family don't know. Uh, didn't know that uh, I I ha I became a blind person. <laughs> so right. the, so they think uh, I also should study. So they sent me to maybe uh, to the regular school. And mm -hmm. the regular school um, at that time they think I'm because at that time I'm a low vision. So they think maybe uh, uh, my sight is so bad. But they they didn't think I'm a blind blind people. So um, I go to I my my father uh, visited the internet and find that oh uh, the blind per person the persons with disability should go to a special school in China. So um, at that time uh, I go to um, we we find uh, found out the special school in my uh, in my hometown and my father sent me to there to learn Briar 
and uh, after that I go to the special college for the blind person in China and uh, you know you know now um, the blind persons in China could uh, only study uh, in uh, could only study uh, uh, acupuncture and the massage Right, so the options are very limited once you go yes. into that special system. Yes, the major is limited. So, uh, mm, although I'm very, I'm not very, I'm not uh, so uh, happy, or I don't like massage anymore. <laughs> but I have no, mm, maybe I have no choice. But uh, after graduation, um, I, uh, graduation, I. Mm, I find I find uh, uh, I want to find uh, more ability for the disabled for the blind persons. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe I can do um, anything else because in uh, during my university career, I write novels, fictions on on internet, and uh, at that time I earn um, a few money. But right. my father think uh, that's uh, that's not a very mainstream um, job. They want me to be a doctor, um, and they take their efforts to um, want to make me uh, to want to make me into the maybe the hospital. But mm -hmm. I don't like it. So I find uh, I. I visited the internet, and at that time I found that one plus one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a very good place for me because I find that there was there were so many blind persons at that time in one plus one. So they they asked me to go to Beijing, and uh, I that's uh, it's in two it was in two thousand and ten. Mm -hmm. I went I so at that time I went to Beijing and worked in one plus one till now. And in terms of uh, after education, we have the problem of career yes. work. Now, yeah. there is a law in China which says that there is a quota for companies that they should employ 1.5% of their workforce should be people with disabilities. Um, in your experience, Alessandra, is this, is this something that companies comply with or, or do they simply pay the fine? Some of them. Mm. Most of them do not. Why not? Um, well, it's easier to pay a fine than to... Uh, understand people with disabilities, mm -hmm. or it is easier to pay a fine in in um, than um, go beyond uh, maybe the assumption that people with disabilities may not be as productive as people without disabilities. If a company or uh, the workplace is accessible, mm -hmm. uh, many of the persons with disabilities who right now do not have access to uh, the job, the workplace, mm -hmm. they can, they could certainly get into the job market, into the workplace and be as productive as people uh, without disabilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a fact and it has been, th there, there is an evidence everywhere in the world. Um, the attitude is more difficult to, um, to challenge and this is why Awareness raising is important in this country, as in many other countries. Right. Sai Tong, you mentioned yeah. that uh, uh, a number of blind people actually pushed for this uh, implementation of the law about being able to sit the university exam. At the government level, uh, at the level of the National People's Congress or, or the representative of the group, the CPPCC, mm. who lobbies for people with disabilities? The C C um, CDPF. Uh, Chinese Disabled Person Federation. Right. They will. They are. Res um, they are responsibility for the, per the persons with a disability. Mm -hmm. Do you feel they are an, an effective organization? Do yeah. They, do they work efficiently? Do they uh, provide that support? Mm. Sometimes the the. Uh, yeah, you see that maybe in the CDPF. Uh, the uh, the uh, the officers are not disabled persons, so they didn't know or they didn't realize uh, what um, the persons with disability really need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we, would you like to see more people with disabilities involved working f for this organization? For yeah, example? they should be. Right. Yeah. You're both working, as I said, every day with uh, people with disabilities. Yeah. Can I ask you in both your circumstances, are you optimistic over the next 10 years that there will be big improvements or that it will be slow or that things won't change? Uh, tai Tong, yeah, yes. are you optimistic about the future, the next 10 yes, years for your organization? Course. Yes, of course, because of maybe because of our works. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We have to be optimistic, right? Yes.
And uh, you see, uh, in these years, more and more persons with disabilities come out and uh, maybe the advocacy for themselves, they say, we want to do this, we want to do that, mm -hmm. we have right to do this, we have right to do that, and uh, maybe the voice is, lo is louder, louder and louder. So the government should uh, focus on the, uh, maybe on these issues. So we, I'm very op uh, optimistic. Uh, very optimistic and very confident. Yes. <laughs> uh, Alessandra, have you yes. any uh, plans or uh, changes for the future in, with, with your particular organization? And, uh, uh, any? Yes, and uh, this is why I'm optimistic, because we can see uh, more areas where we can work, but also very good skills like the one Tai Tong is showing mm -hmm. um, about the future. Uh, for us, uh, we are including more and more agenda perspective into yeah. our work, because we uh, have to acknowledge that uh, uh, sometimes men and women with and without disabilities may have different needs mm -hmm. and if we understand which are the needs we can address them better and uh, there is the evidence that sometimes being a girl or a woman with disability means being uh, discriminate twice as a woman and as a person with disability so we have to keep this in mind when we develop our projects and um, also on another new group that is a group uh, with mental health um, problems and mental health issues who have been uh, left a little bit in the corner for a long time in, a, in, a, in a big, such a big country but the number of people who may be um, belonging to this group is growing in China and therefore they also deserve our support and our attention. Right, the, these are your ambitions uh, for, for the future. If I could ask you just before we go, Tai Tong, what, what is the most important thing that you feel that the government, those in power, could do to help the people that you work with? Maybe I think to change the attitude of the public. Mm -hmm. And I, I can give you an example. Yes. Yeah. Uh, last year I interviewed a, a girl who, um, who came from Harvard Law School and she was uh, blind and deaf. So uh, I asked uh, I ask a question from, for her that uh, when, uh, when, 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 her, when she was, bo was born, how, how did the doctor told to, um, told to her family? He, her, uh, she told me that uh, the doctor um, told her father and the mother that, that this baby should go to a training center and learn, uh, and learn how to uh, live independent. But in China, when when I go, when I when my eyes uh, went bad, the doctors uh, said to my family that, "Oh, your life is game over." So it maybe the attitude is very different mm -hmm. between uh, these two countries. That um, maybe in China, more more persons also think also think the blind persons or the persons with a disability are. Mm, uh, uh, non-valuable, uh, uh, useless. So you see, the uh, education system and the employment, uh, the situation they faced are very difficult. So I think maybe to change the attitudes, uh, to a uh, to raise the uh, awareness for um, of the public for the persons with disability is very important. Uh, a change in public attitudes. Uh, Alessandra, what would the most important step be for you? Um, I could see actually two possible steps. Mm -hmm. uh, one is um, working hand in hand with the China Federation of Persons with Disabilities, which is a semi-governmental organization. Uh, we always promote uh, for them to have a more frequent um, and close communication with the local organization in China working on disability, because I'm sure that uh, they have a lot to say and a lot to share. And this can also help to improve uh, the services and the work that they are doing in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second is to continue investing in the rural areas uh, because that is certainly an area that needs uh, investment. They are already doing a lot, but more can be done. Well, I hope that uh, in both your cases that uh, your optimism will be fulfilled and that uh, and at least some of those steps uh, will take place. Uh, tai Tong, yeah. uh, Alessandra, Aresu, thank you both very yeah. much for appearing on the level. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you.